Welcome back to Adam Tet. In a surprising twist, the 2023 Tesla Cybertruck rolled out with a feature we didn't anticipate since its 2019 reveal, the locking differential. Elon Musk himself highlighted this in the official delivery event recently, noting, It has locking differentials, rear torque vectoring, uh, and the crazy thing is they'll do this all in comfort. While it's a significant feature, it has yet to be widely discussed or emphasized. So what exactly are locking differentials? And how do they function in the Cybertruck? Why are they considered a special feature that deserves more attention? We'll explore all these questions in today's video. And remember, if you love our content, hit like, subscribe to Atom Tech, and help us reach 3,000 subscribers. What revolutionary features does the locking differential bring to the Cybertruck? so we can control both the firmware. You don't need a differential anymore because they're both mechanically independent. Uh, and together, all three, so these two, and then the one in the front for the tried, uh, produce 845 horsepower. Okay. So it's pretty impressive. What's yeah. the front compared to the back? Is the front like 300? Uh, about, I would say. I don't know the individual specs for it. Uh, but you get a permanent magnet motor in the front of the tri, and in the dual, you get the permanent magnet for your induction switch in the front. In a recent presentation at the event, Elon Musk announced a significant feature for the Tesla Cybertruck, the inclusion of a locking differential, commonly referred to as a locking diff. This addition marks a pivotal enhancement in the vehicle's off-road capabilities, setting a new standard for electric trucks in challenging terrains. It's claimed to be formidable off-road as it runs on 20-inch wheels with 35-inch all-terrain tires fitted to it, while its locking differentials underneath do not protrude beneath the flat floor, meaning they're less likely to ground out or be damaged on rough ground. This locking diff feature enhances the truck's performance in rugged terrains, ensuring both wheels on an axle rotate at the same speed for optimal traction, a significant advantage in various driving conditions. The Cybertruck will utilize a three-motor setup with a unique 300-horsepower motor at the front equipped with the electronic locking differential and a pair of motors at the rear axle each driving a wheel, thus eliminating the need for a differential there, totaling up to 845 horsepower. This setup raises questions about the locking diff's operation, whether it's mechanical or software-based, and how it will be controlled manually or automatically. The Cybertruck's locking differentials come with various operation modes to suit different driving needs. Automatic locking differentials automatically lock the axle when they detect a significant speed difference between the two wheels, ensuring both wheels turn at the same speed under low traction conditions. This is particularly useful in situations where a quick response to changing traction conditions is necessary. On the other hand, selectable locking differentials allow the driver to manually engage and disengage the locking mechanism, typically through a switch or lever inside the vehicle. This manual control provides drivers with the flexibility to activate the locking feature as needed, depending on the driving conditions. How does a locking differential transform the Cybertruck's off-road capabilities? Why are standard differentials less effective in off-road conditions? A differential, a crucial part of a vehicle's drivetrain, allows two wheels on the same axle to rotate at different speeds. This is particularly useful during cornering, as the outer wheel needs to turn faster than the inner wheel. However, this system faces challenges in off-road conditions. In off-road scenarios or on slippery surfaces, a standard differential can be a drawback when one wheel loses traction, such as slipping or being airborne. The locking differential resolves this by locking both wheels on an axle, ensuring both receive equal traction. This feature is invaluable for navigating challenging terrains such as mud, sand, snow, or rocky paths. What makes up a locking differential and how does it function? Locking differentials are composed of several key components that work together to create their unique functionality. The differential case houses the gears and the locking mechanism, connecting to the drive shaft which transfers power from the engine to the differential. 
The ring gear, attached to the differential case, receives rotational force from the pinion gear connected to the drive shaft. Inside the differential case are the spider gears, a set of smaller gears that allow the wheels to rotate at different speeds, distributing the torque unevenly when necessary, such as during turning. The side gears, connected to the axle shafts, mesh with the spider gears and transfer power to the wheels. The locking mechanism, which can be mechanical, pneumatic, hydraulic, or electronic, differentiates a locking differential from a standard one. Its primary function is to lock the movement of the spider gears, causing both axle shafts and thus both wheels to rotate at the same speed. In selectable locking differentials, an actuator which can be a switch, lever, or electronic control is used by the driver to engage or disengage the locking mechanism. This allows for greater control depending on the driving conditions. How does the locking differential operate and excel in low traction situations? Under normal driving conditions, the locking differential functions like a standard open differential, with the spider gears allowing the wheels to rotate at different speeds for smooth turning. When the locking mechanism is engaged, either automatically or manually, it prevents the spider gears from rotating relative to each other, locking the side gears in place. This forces both wheels to rotate at the same speed, providing enhanced traction in low traction situations such as off-road or slippery surfaces. Even if one wheel is off the ground or on a slippery surface, the other wheel will still receive power, ensuring better traction and stability. What insights did Sandy Monroe reveal about the role of differential in the Cybertruck three years ago? Things that I've already talked about, but this is a wrap up. So the first thing is a variable height. If I'm going up something that looks like that, I wanna be really high. And this thing all by itself has got 16 inches of ground clearance. Back in 2020, Sandy Monroe, in episode three of Monroe Live series, delved into the workings of the differential in the Cybertruck using a physical model for demonstration. This differential is pivotal in optimizing the vehicle's traction and control, crucial for various driving conditions from urban streets to rugged off-road paths. It enhances road grip, particularly during turns, improving the Cybertruck's stability and handling. Additionally, the differential plays a vital role in reducing stress on the drivetrain, thereby extending the vehicle's lifespan and ensuring its durability. This makes the differential not just a functional component, but also a key factor in the Cybertruck's overall performance and longevity. In today's episode of Atom Tech, we've delved deep into the intriguing world of the Tesla Cybertruck's locking differential, a feature that has been turning heads since its announcement by Elon Musk. So, what are your thoughts on the Cybertruck's locking differential and its impact on off-road performance? Do you think this feature sets a new standard for electric trucks? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this deep dive, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Adam Tech. Stay tuned for our latest updates and never miss out on the newest advancements in automotive technology. Navigating the challenges of cold weather efficiency in electric cars has been a long-standing concern, particularly due to the significant impact on range. Recent data from Recurrent Auto, based on a study involving 10,000 vehicles across the United States, reveals that electric vehicles can experience up to a 50% reduction in range during colder temperatures. Addressing this issue, Tesla engineers have been proactive, incorporating advanced features into their vehicles, including the latest Cybertruck. Equipped with a specially designed HVAC system, heating, ventilating, and air conditioning, Cybertruck boasts elements such as a unique heat pump and HEPA filter. So how does this innovative system contribute to enhancing Cybertruck's performance compared to old models? What is superior about it? How does Cybertruck's special heat pump deal with extreme weather conditions? To comprehend it, Let's first delve into the explanation provided by Tesla's vice president, Lars Moravi, regarding the heat pump. He mentioned the easiest way to think about the heat pump is like an air conditioner in reverse. An air conditioning system takes heat out of your house and pumps it to the outside environment, which is hotter. The heat pump is harvesting heat when it's cold outside and pushing it into the cabin of the car. The basis of a heat pump is just around using the energy you have to make the vehicle more efficient. It can keep the cabin comfortable and generate its own heat and prioritize power. To put it simply, 
The heat pump pulls the air from outside the car, which heats the refrigerant and also warms the air. Then the warm air is pumped back into the cabin. Tesla further expounds on this in APA documents, stating, Tesla Cybertruck's heat pump reduces the energy required by the HVAC system in both heating and cooling scenarios. The energy required to heat the cabin varies by weather and occupant comfort needs, but on average consumes approximately 10% of the total energy available for driving. However, even moderately cold weather, zero C, consumption can increase to 25% or more. A heat pump consumes a small amount of electrical energy to thermodynamically upgrade low temperature, less useful thermal energy to higher temperature, more useful thermal energy, making it suitable for occupant comfort. That is, for a given electrical power input, a heat pump will return 1 to 5x in useful heating power. An electrical cabin heater provides one, one in heating power, and therefore is far less efficient. The above means that Cybertruck heat pump, which draws 1Q, will generate a maximum heat equivalent of 5Q, providing an efficiency benefit of up to 500%. This represents a substantial advancement in thermal energy conversion within Tesla's vehicle lineup. To put this into perspective, the Model Y, Tesla's first car equipped with a heat pump, can typically produce around 3Q of thermal energy for every 1Q of electrical energy, resulting in an efficiency of 300%. The inclusion of a heat pump in Cybertruck comes as no surprise, especially considering Elon Musk's declaration a year ago that Cybertruck is Tesla's best vehicle to date. The rapid and effective heating capabilities make driving a joy in any climate. Tesla has now integrated this technology into every model they produce. In their pursuit of reaping the advantages of a heat pump system while minimizing complexity, they've introduced what they term the super manifold, essentially a two-layer PCB assembly. This innovation reflects Tesla's commitment to streamlining and enhancing the efficiency of their vehicles, contributing to a more comfortable and advanced driving experience across their entire lineup. Prior to the integration of heat pumps, Tesla vehicles relied on a resistive heating system. Andy Sly, a dedicated Tesla enthusiast, delves into the intricacies of the model. Why is heat pump in his comprehensive analysis? All Tesla model vehicles prior to the Model Y warm the cabin through something called a resistive heating system where electricity is sent through a resistive heating element which creates heat that's blown out of the air vents. A resistive heating system does not produce heat unless the heat is turned on. Think of it like you're running a space heater that's plugged into the wall in your house. It's immediate heat as soon as it's turned on. Unlike gasoline vehicles, which utilize some of their waste heat for cabin heating, Electric cars face a different scenario. An electric vehicle lacks the substantial waste heat generated by an internal combustion engine, leading to the prevalent use of resistive heating. This means that to warm up the cabin, an electric car must draw energy directly from the battery, inevitably reducing the estimated range. How effective is the filtration capability of the HEPA air filter in the bioweapon defense mode Cybertruck boasts an advanced air filtration system with a bioweapon defense mode, originally developed for Tesla's Model X. This functionality establishes a positive pressure environment within the cabin, effectively preventing the intrusion of harmful pollutants and allergens. According to Tesla's ordering website, Cybertruck includes built-in hospital-grade HEPA, high-efficiency particulate, filter that helps provide protection from 99.97% of dust, pollen, mold, bacteria, and any airborne particles with a size of 0.3 microns. Not only does this system yield significant effects, but it also provides user-friendly maintenance. Cybertruck's HEPA filter is conveniently positioned behind a removable panel in the front, facilitating easy replacement. Automotive engineer Sandy Monroe pointed it out in his video. He said, this is where, this is kind of convenient because this is where your HEPA filter is for cleaning the air inside the, uh, inside the uh, car. I kind of like this idea. Um, if you have kids that have got breathing problems and stuff like that, like I did when I was, my son was young, this is kind of a handy thing to have happen. Beyond these features, 
The Tesla Cybertruck application reveals that Cybertruck incorporates climate control modes, including defrost, panel, and floor, which can be customized in various combinations. The system consists of two panel vents, two front row floor vents, defroster vent, second row floor vents, second row console vents with positive air shutoff and turning vane manual control. In addition, Cybertruck air conditioner system is an R1234 IF refrigerant consisting of a high voltage electric scroll type with integrated inverter with high voltage interlock loop. The compressor oil is polyolefin ester oil that is non-conducting. This is all the information we have compiled about Cybertruck's special HEVSC system. With heat pump and HEPA filter as two key technologies, Cybertruck can operate well in harsh environments, reduce battery consumption, and can also filter dust and bacteria, providing a smooth experience both inside and outside the vehicle cabin. So is there anything we missed or anything you'd like us to discuss in the next video? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed our video, don't forget to subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and hit the bell icon so as not to miss any latest information. Your support is crucial for expanding our content to more audiences. In a recent post by Nick Cruz Patain, an ex-user, an image about the special feature he found in the Cybertruck's off-road Baja settings called Wade Mode revealed a feature designed specifically for navigating through water. This raises the question, can the Cybertruck truly transform into a water craft? How does Cybertruck perform when driving through water and what are the underlying factors that enable this capability? Join us as we break down the details of the Cybertruck's performance when driving through water, exploring the mechanisms behind the wade mode, and delving into potential accessories that could enhance its aquatic prowess. From buoyancy calculations to the pressurization of the battery pack, we'll explore the science and engineering marvels that make the Cybertruck stand out in the realm of electric off-road vehicles. Buckle up and join us on this thrilling journey as we uncover the enigmatic secrets of the Cybertruck's ability to conquer both land and water. Let's dive in and explore the future of off-road adventures with the Cybertruck. How can Cybertruck float on water? However, the Cybertruck apparently has a wade mode. Now, wade might mean put the air suspension in the highest position and hope you make it to the other side, or it might mean swim. To float, the weight force on a vehicle must be equal or less than the upward push by the water. The Cybertruck boasts impressive dimensions, measuring 223.7 inches in length, which is approximately 5.68 meters, 95 inches in width, or about 2.41 meters, and standing at a height of 70 and a half inches, or around 1.79 meters. In a hypothetical scenario where the Cybertruck is partially submerged, let's delve into its buoyancy. Assuming the vehicle being half submerged, the resultant submerged volume calculates to approximately 432.6 cubic feet or 12 and a quarter cubic meters. As per Archimedes' principle, the thrust force applied to the Cybertruck is computed by multiplying the specific weight of water or 10,000 newtons per cubic meter by the submerged volume at 12 and a quarter cubic meters, yielding a final figure of 122,000. 500 newtons. Comparatively, the Cybertruck's mass, specifically the Cyber Beast version, is 6,843 pounds or around 3.1 tons, leading to 31,000 newtons in terms of weight. Remarkably, the vehicle's weight is only a quarter of the thrust applied by the Archimedes principle, indicating that the Cybertruck has the potential to float on water. Massive adjustable suspension height. Is that a key to driving in water? Fiber wheel. It's like a the weird. Reason? No, no, no. The uh, yoke oh. thing. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's not a yoke, not a wheel. Wait, is that a white interior? They have white. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But is there, I thought that was only on the performance. Mode, so. I don't know.
Cybertruck can tackle anything with electronically adaptive air suspension that offers 12 inches of travel and 17 inches of clearance. However, driving through places deeper than 17 inches is a different story. We do not know how water resistant the Cybertruck is and whether there is any official data to evaluate this or not. Meanwhile, Rivian vehicles have independent air suspension, which allows for 6.5 inches of vertical travel as low as 7.9 inches or as high as 14.4 inches. The air suspension is much lower than Tesla, but Rivian has what they call the thermoplastic polyurethane casing that can handle tumbles into asphalt and into mud, and the key fob is IP67 rated. If a product has an IP67 rating, that indicates it is waterproof, which means it can be submerged in three feet of water for up to 30 minutes. What is the mechanism behind the pressurization of the battery pack? A Cybertruck Owner Club member's comment provided valuable insights into the Cybertruck's waiting mode, suggesting that the vehicle probably utilizes its current suspension compressor to pressurize the battery pack. The commenter highlighted that a pressure of less than 2 pounds per square inch is adequate to counteract water pressure. Moreover, electric vehicle batteries will be stored in a sealed battery pack made of metal. This metal casing has some kind of pressure-sensitive vent hole. To protect the battery from large temperature and pressure changes, a vent membrane is needed to cover the vent hole so that air can move in two directions, regulating the pressure inside the battery pack. Additionally, it also prevents water, dust, and oil from penetrating. Venting is a critical component of EV battery thermal management. As temperatures rise or fall, a breathable vent provides pressure equalization to protect battery housing seals. EV batteries are typically already sealed from water, so the Cybertruck's supposed on-demand pressurization raises some questions. Patrick Durham, the engineer and fire department captain whose video helped make sense of the Tesla Model X that burned underwater next to a Florida boat ramp, expressed his views on this issue. When being asked a question about the water resistance of a battery pack and the idea of pressurizing a pack, he said, Each battery pack is uniquely constructed. All battery packs should be watertight, but they also require mechanisms to cope with atmospheric pressure changes. Each pack employs a slightly different strategy, with some being more robust than others. At this time, I have not seen a mechanism for pressurizing the battery compartment in any other vehicle. Possible future accessory... Elon Musk's bold claim that Cybertruck could double as a watercraft has left many intrigued, but skepticism lingers regarding the practicality of such a feat. In a post dated September 29th of 2022, Musk asserted that Cybertruck would be waterproof enough to serve briefly as a boat, enabling it to traverse rivers, lakes, and even seas under calm conditions. In a second post from the same day, Musk wrote, Needs to be able to get from Starbase to South Padre Island, which requires crossing the channel. Describing the channel as 42 feet deep, a quarter of a mile wide between parallel jetties and a 1.14 miles at its widest point, Musk outlined a challenging aquatic journey for the electric pickup. However, a lingering question arises. How can the 6,000-pound Cybertruck safely and intentionally navigate this substantial body of water. Critics argue that Musk's claim raises concerns about the vehicle's ability to float without visible mechanisms for maintaining buoyancy. Without additional accessories, Cybertruck's capability to stay afloat is questionable. Moreover, the absence of apparent means of propulsion raises doubts about its ability to navigate the channel intentionally. 
However, that has been partially cleared up. In October of 2022, Elon Musk shared on X, you'd need an electric propeller mounted on the tow hitch to go faster than a few knots. Notably, Tesla has not officially discussed or mentioned this propeller on the Cybertruck accessories page. There is certainly the chance that Tesla could develop something along these lines in the future, but the capabilities need to be tested extensively before it would even be close to recommended as a potential option for those who want to cross over small bodies of water. The purpose of this propeller remains speculative, possibly aimed at addressing standing water on roadways to safeguard the vehicle and its battery pack. Another idea from Jonathan Ramsey from Autoblog predicts that Tesla will launch a product package specifically for those who are passionate about wading in with Cybertruck. He says, or who knows, Tesla could unveil a $23,000 Cyberbeast airboat package, which could be quite effectively cool. This is all the information we have compiled about the Cybertruck's wading mode. It may be a future feature in the interface that will be implemented in a later over-the-air update. The question remains, what specific challenges might Tesla encounter in ensuring the Cybertruck's waterproof functionality? What safety measures are in place to mitigate potential risks associated with the wade mode, especially in diverse water conditions? Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Ford just dropped their estimated production to 80,000 from 160,000 for 2024, and Tesla could easily get up to 75 or 80,000 next year. So Tesla might produce more Cybertrucks next year. It is quite possible. They could produce more Cybertrucks in 2024 than Ford and their F-150 Lightning. The above is YouTuber Mr. Know-It-All's prediction about the number of Cybertrucks that can be produced next year. If these forecasts materialize, it'll be a terrifying thing for Ford, whose F-Series has long been a dominant force in the U.S. market for over four decades, now potentially overshadowed by the Cybertruck. Moreover, the upcoming year may see the production of Cybertrucks soaring to unprecedented heights, potentially surpassing projections by reaching several hundred thousand units. To validate this information, let's scrutinize Elon Musk's statements regarding Cybertruck's annual production capacity and take a closer look at the manufacturing procedures at Giga Texas to provide the most precise figures. What specific technological advancements are driving the efficiency of the Cybertruck production process, and in what ways do these innovations surpass those employed by its competitors, showcasing a superior edge in the automotive landscape? Rest assured, we have all your questions covered. 1. What speculations surround the annual production figures of the Cybertruck? Regarding the annual production of Cybertrucks, various Wall Street analysts, including Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, and UBS, project that the company could manufacture approximately 48,500 units in 2024. However, predictions for 2025 show a wider range, with delivery estimates spanning from 78,000 to 230,000 units. Elon Musk, on the other hand, offers a distinct forecast. During a segment on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast released on November 28, Musk reiterated the challenges in producing the Cybertruck, stating, We're aiming to make about 200,000 a year at point production, maybe a little more, but I just can't emphasize enough that manufacturing is much, much harder than the initial design, highlighting the complexities of bringing the futuristic-looking Cybertruck into production. Nevertheless, Tesla's significant strides in the Austin facility's production line bolster confidence in Elon Musk's claim to achieve production goals. The subsequent section will detail these enhancements. 2. What groundbreaking technological advancements were incorporated into the Cybertruck production line? During a recent visit to the Giga Texas factory, Sandy Monroe had the opportunity to learn about Tesla's production line with a particular focus on the manufacturing process for Cybertruck bodies. Tesla employs a proprietary stainless steel alloy for the Cybertruck, aptly named Hard Freaking Stainless, HFS. This alloy is engineered to possess exceptional hardness and corrosion resistance while retaining enough ductility for effectively shaping during the manufacturing process. Distinctively, Tesla receives HFS not as a conventional flat sheet, but in the form of massive rolls. These rolls need to undergo an initial process of unrolling and flattening before subsequent manufacturing operations can commence. This intricate procedure is executed on a laser blanking line, a pioneering technology developed by Tesla 
in collaboration with Schuler, making it as the first of its kind in the industry. The lead engineer from the straightening line at Giga Texas accentuated the groundbreaking nature of this technology. So this is the first of its kind laser blanking line. What it does is it takes coils, it unwinds them, and it's taking out the internal stresses from the raw material. It's passing them through something called a leveler. All it's really doing is it's got a bunch of work rolls and they're moving up and down and they're flattening the part. We want to be careful that we don't work the material too much because you do something called work hardening and yeah. then you uh, shear the part later on. Yeah. After the stainless steel sheets are flattened, they undergo precision cutting into blanks using a pair of lasers. Following the cutting process, these blanks are systematically stacked by automated machinery. Lar Moravi, Tesla's vice president, highlights a roughly 80% utilization rate of the panels, showcasing Tesla's commitment to minimizing wastage. The stainless steel rolls are tailored to the specific parts being manufactured. This process results in remarkable thickness for the stainless steel used in the Cybertruck's panels. The doors, for instance, boast the thickness of 1.8 millimeters, approximately 0.07 inches, while other panels are slightly thinner at 1.4 millimeters, 0.055 inches. Lar Moravi underscored Tesla's ongoing efforts to enhance the strength of hard-freaking stainless HFS with the ultimate goal of achieving the desired strength and bulletproof toughness using a thinner material. It's worth noting that the original Cybertruck door had a thickness of 2.53 millimeters. The critical point in this process involves a quality check performed using a 2D scanner. Periodic assessments are conducted on the blanks utilizing a 2D scanner with a camera or machine vision component positioned at a considerable height above the scanning bed. During this stage, the outline of the flat bank is meticulously compared to a digital template. The system then displays markers at various points, indicating compliance and assuring that the panels are being produced with exact dimensions and micron accuracy. This 2D scanning tool serves as a pivotal instrument for the team to uphold stringent quality standards throughout the production process. So you can see this level of micron precision here, you know, Elon's been pushing us yeah. on. You can see some of these 0, 7 microns, 15 microns, 26, right. 2, 26. These are pretty, pretty intense levels of yeah. precision. Moving forward, we get a glimpse of one of the dies employed to stamp the inner panels for the front doors. Each door consists of the flat stainless steel outer layer, shaping the car's external body, and an inner panel providing structural support and serving as a mounting point for interior trim and hardware. The well-maintained stamping die boasts smooth, shiny surfaces, with inserts crafted from an aluminum bronze alloy. While aluminum alloys may not be the most robust materials for press tooling, it represents a necessary compromise for flawless mark-free parts. Currently, the plant has completed around 1,000 to 1,200 stamps per part, but projections indicate that an increase of 50,000 to 100,000 stamps could be in the near future. Next is the hot stamp process for producing Cybertruck chassis door rings, also known as body side inner. The production line features three furnaces, each equipped with seven chambers capable of heating 21 blanks simultaneously. The blanks, reaching temperatures of up to 900 degrees Celsius, 1652 degrees Fahrenheit, are retrieved by a robot and placed into the press. The press brings the upper and lower dies together, maintaining the position for approximately six to eight seconds with water running through the dies to aid in quenching. Subsequently, an automatic robotic racking system ideally unloads the parts into the racks. The latest innovation in Cybertruck manufacturing is air bending. This process involves blowing a cushion of high speed air through the bottom press tool to levitate the metal panel. A robotic arm equipped with a suction gripper picks up a stainless steel blank and places it in the air bending tool. The Trump True Bend 5320 press executes the initial bend, and the robot rotates the workpiece for the second bend. Throughout the process, the bending machine measures the part to ensure correct angles, maintaining a 5mm, approximately 0.2 inch internal bend radius. Remarkably, although only the outer side of the door panel benefits from the air cushion, the inner surface looks pristine. Despite their thickness, the door panels are resilient absorbing about 75% of side crash loads directly through the panel itself. Presently, Giga Texas has 20,000 employees, 
with the support of robots in both the production and quality inspection process, along with the application of technologies such as air bending and laser cutting to help reduce production time. It is likely that about 4,000 Cybertruck units will be produced every week in Texas. Previously at this same factory, with only 12,000 employees, they produced up to 4,000 Model Y cars in a week, and that can be repeated with Cybertruck. If so, there will be more than 200,000 Cybertrucks delivered next year, just as Musk predicted. So, what do you think about that? What future changes might be applied in the upcoming production line? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. We're focusing on two groundbreaking features that are stirring up excitement. Cybertruck's high fidelity park assist and the revolutionary ether loop wiring system. Ever wondered how Tesla is redefining the norms of automotive technology? How does the Cybertruck's Park Assist differ from anything you've seen before? And what's the big deal with its Ether Loop system? Before we jump in, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and join us on this tech deep dive. Is Tesla's Cybertruck redefining the art of precision parking? I'll see how far it lets me pull up. So now me looking over the hood, I can't really see anything anymore. And it's doing this stuff like, okay, it's not exactly sure. It says stop though. Before we can answer that, we have to first explore the following. What is high fidelity park assist? As Tesla continues to push the boundaries of automotive technology, the Cybertruck emerges not just as a powerhouse of performance, but also as a beacon of advanced tech features. Among these, the High Fidelity Park Assist stands out, aiming to elevate the parking experience to new heights. This feature, part of Tesla's Christmas update, introduces a detailed 3D simulation of the vehicle's surroundings during parking maneuvers. Replacing the traditional 2D obstacle band, this high-quality 3D structure is an extension of Tesla's occupancy network displaying lane lines and parking spots to assist drivers in tight spaces. The system uses images from cameras around the vehicle to create a detailed 3D model of its surroundings. Users can interact with this 3D image, allowing examination from various angles. But then again, how can we be sure Cybertruck is equipped with this feature? Previously, when Tesla delivered Model 3 Highland, Tesla's High Fidelity Park Assist feature was only available for vehicles that exclusively use the Tesla Vision system, that is, vehicle models not equipped with ultrasonic sensors. But interestingly, Tesla has hinted at phasing out ultrasonic sensors, or USS, from their vehicles, starting with the Cybertruck. Prototypes of the Cybertruck equipped with Tesla's Hardware 4.0 computer appear to lack ultrasonic sensors, as observed in images of both the original prototype unveiled in late 2019 and newer prototypes. The bumper of both vehicles lacks ultrasonic sensors, featuring cameras instead. This suggests that the Cybertruck was designed without ultrasonic sensors from the outset. Given that the Cybertruck is a new model, it's highly likely to utilize Tesla Vision, ensuring this smart parking feature's presence. And even if Cybertruck is equipped with ultrasonic sensors, then Tesla's autopilot director, Ashok Elaswamy, recently confirmed that the high fidelity park assist feature would be rolled out to Tesla vehicles equipped with ultrasonic sensors. So, either way, we can be sure that Cybertruck has high fidelity park assist incorporated. Now, I bet you're wondering how special is this technology, the high fidelity park assist? The technology behind the HFPA integrates advanced image processing to create a detailed 3D map providing information about surrounding objects including poles, other vehicles, and obstacles. The system can differentiate and display different colors for objects based on distance and danger level. This feature uses a continuous distance field to smoothly and effectively simulate the shape of obstacles. The vehicle's image is not static, but a real-time prediction of the network. Besides obstacles, the feature also predicts ground paint lines, all aiding in executing parking maneuvers through a single screen. Eloswami emphasizes that this is the first version, with more improvements expected in the future. In testing, the system provides clear images of the surrounding space, aiding drivers in assessing situations more easily. 
It successfully identifies pedestrians and large objects, but struggles with flat objects like cardboard boxes. The system also shows the ability to predict the shape and location of objects obscured from view, like behind poles. But a lot of skeptics might be asking, can High Fidelity Park Assist really improve the ease of parking? This novel edition presents an extensive and intricate perspective surpassing that of conventional 360-degree camera systems, furnishing drivers with precise and invaluable information, particularly in demanding parking scenarios. Despite its advancements, it encounters constraints in identifying specific object types, such as carton boxes, and in detecting blind spots situated in front of the vehicle. Looking forward, Tesla anticipates a continuous evolution and augmentation of the system's functionalities. This trajectory might encompass the integration of features like texture and color recognition aimed at elevating accuracy and operational efficiency. Anticipated future updates are poised to ameliorate the system's performance across diverse conditions, including challenging low-light environments, further enhancing its overall utility and effectiveness. Moving on from there, could Tesla's Ether Loop be the game changer in automotive wiring? And the, um, the number of wires that go across the car went from uh, five, 490 to 155, so a 70, that's two, 68 wow, percent that's, reduction. That's three quarters. Three quarters. How can individuals grasp the underlying concept of the Ether Loop? This revolutionary feature represents an Ethernet based wiring system, deriving its name from the fusion of Ethernet and Loop, thus, Ether Loop. Operating as a cutting edge gigabit Ethernet network, it heralds a momentous departure from the conventions of conventional vehicular communications systems. Its pledge to redefine our perspective on automotive wiring signifies a transformative leap forward in technological innovation. Has Etherloop's impact on wiring efficiency been noteworthy as of late? In a comprehensive interview with Tesla's top executives, the intricacies of the Etherloop system were discussed in detail. This system dramatically reduces the number of wires needed in the vehicle, cutting down from 490 in the Model 3 to just a measly 155 in the Cybertruck, a reduction of about 68%. Despite this decrease in wiring, the number of endpoints in the Cybertruck has increased to 368 compared to 273 in the Model 3, underscoring the efficiency of this new wiring system. Etherloop's data transmission capabilities are equally impressive, the system enhancing communication speed to millisecond scale latency. It also facilitates bi-directional audio data transmission to the vehicle's speakers, supporting both the sound system and the active road noise cancellation system. The Etherloop system not only reduces the weight and latency in communication, thereby boosting the vehicle's efficiency and performance, but it also supports other advanced technologies in the Cybertruck, like the noise cancellation system. According to David Lau, Tesla's head of software engineering, Etherloop allows engineers to install controllers for end devices instead of running running a series of wires from the control panel to these components. Can Etherloop simplify vehicle assembly? The operational mechanism of Etherloop is such that auxiliary devices like speakers no longer need direct connections to their primary control sources, like amplifiers. Instead, they connect to the nearest high-speed controller. Etherloop's flexibility and simplicity in connecting individual vehicle components make the assembly process more straightforward, especially in Tesla's unboxed production approach. This innovative production method, unlike traditional assembly lines, involves separately assembling vehicle parts before combining them, enhancing labor efficiency and space-time effectiveness. The traditional wiring system, which required manual installation, posed challenges in the unboxed process. Tesla's solution with the 48-volt bi-directional gigabit Ethernet loop not only halves the wiring mass, but also supports this new assembly process. The Etherloop system, with its built-in redundancy, is crucial for essential systems like steering and braking, ensuring safety and reliability. As we wrap up our exploration of the Cybertruck's newest and revolutionary features, it's evident that Tesla is pushing the boundaries of automotive technology. What are your thoughts on these groundbreaking developments? Do you think they will significantly change the way we interact with vehicles? Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below and join the discussion. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned to Adam Tech for more on the latest in tech and automotive innovation. And you know, if you're creative and you yeah. want, you could figure out how to put an outboard motor plugged into your outlet yeah. there, turn it on from your screen and go boating. Really? <laughs> I mean, I, I haven't engineered that one yet, but I'm sure you could do it, Jack. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's right up my alley.
we are going to offer a mod package that enables Cybertruck to traverse at least 100 meters of water as a boat. This is what Elon has recently confirmed on X. The Tesla CEO has confirmed one of the wildest features teased for the Cybertruck. The ability to briefly use it as a boat. It's actually becoming a reality. In the wake of the delivery event last month, a myriad of concealed innovations within the Cybertruck has come to light. Which among these newly unveiled features can be deemed as groundbreaking technological advancements? What technical change has Tesla applied to the Cybertruck in order to achieve this? Rest assured, because we have all your questions covered. But before we delve into today's content, kindly show your support by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to the Atom Tech channel for the latest updates in tech and innovation. Now, let's transition into the main topic at hand. The first thing we have to cover is how did Tesla make the eagerly awaited Cybertruck wave mode possible? In a recent revelation on Jay Leno's Garage episode, Tesla's Vice President of Vehicle Engineering Lars Moravi officially confirmed the existence of Cybertruck's wave mode. When equipped with the optional package, the Cybertruck's battery undergoes pressurization by channeling a small amount of air from the air suspension inside the pack. Despite the pack's inherent waterproofing, Morovi elucidated that this innovative approach serves as a secondary safety measure. Guarding against water ingress, especially crucial during off-road scenarios such as river crossings. And in that mode, we have also wade mode. Wade, wade mode, mode. As in wading in water. Yeah, yeah. you want know, to sit in water, um, you want to go through a river, you want to make sure you could do that. And um, <clears throat> you can go through about two and a half feet, a little more than two and a half feet of water without any water getting into the cabin and having to worry about that. But also with an electric vehicle, we wanted to be super smart about that. We have this new technology called, uh, we call it the scuba pack, because we took the air suspension system, we actually pressurized the battery. You know, water's and bat water and batteries, they don't really get along. You, right. know, you get electrolytes and they start to arc, but we wanted to keep that water out and make sure you wouldn't have to worry about that. And that's where we came up with the scuba pack. And that happens just by pressing a button on the UI, say wade mode, we'll pressurize the pack. Tesla's ambitions for the Cybertruck extend beyond river crossings, with plans to offer a package that, package that transforms the vehicle into a functional boat capable of navigating at least 100 meters of water, according to Musk's claim. However, specific details regarding pricing and availability remain undisclosed, except to say it will include upgraded door seals to ensure water doesn't infiltrate the cabin. Notably, in the previous year, Musk had suggested the Cybertruck's capability to cross the channel from the SpaceX Starbase facility in Boca Chica to South Padre Island, covering a distance of little less than 500 meters. Next, I'm pretty sure you didn't know about this upcoming feature, although it's probably one of the most interesting and resourceful ones in the Cybertruck's arsenal, Drift Backward Mode. The intrigue of wade mode is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Cybertruck's hidden features. Wondering about the cool maneuvers you can pull off on the road? As per Tesla's head of engineering, Cybertruck allows you to drift backward. Lars elaborated on this feature, attributing it to the Cybertruck's rear wheel steering and the ability to deactivate both rear motors, channeling all power to the front motor. Essentially, this configuration transforms the front and the rear of the pickup, enabling backward drifting. A leaked video last month from an Alaskan vehicle testing ground showcased the Cybertruck prototype utilizing four-wheel steering to execute reverse drifts and perform standing 180-degree turns. Taking mobility a step further, Tesla has ingeniously designed the underbelly of the Cybertruck's battery pack in a way such that people can easily bolt on a skid plate in order to go super off-roading. Despite already boasting the highest ground clearance among vehicles at 17 and a half inches, the addition of bolt-on skid plates ensures the Cybertruck is even more adept at tackling off-road terrain. Now, we're going to discuss a bit about another gem of a feature, hidden air pressure. What exactly is its main purpose? Adding to the Cybertruck's versatility, while Cybertruck doesn't come equipped with an onboard air compressor like its Rivian counterpart, Tesla has addressed this by introducing an offboard air compressor. This compressor, though not integrated into the vehicle, will be conveniently stored in the underbed storage of the back of the truck. In the event of a flat tire, users can easily plug it into the 120 volt or 240 volt outlet in the bed, providing a practical solution for inflating tires on the go. So we do have a compressor on board, obviously fills the air suspension. There's about 17 liters of capacity in that. In oh, that so you, in, can, you can 
If you get a spare, you can. Well, the thing is, that tire has probably about 120 liters of air in yeah, it. Right. So even though we're at you know 300 psi there, and this is at 50, you know the entropy that you need to take the air out of there and put it into there means you're going to fill really slow, like 20-30 right. minutes. Morovi explains that the decision not to utilize the Cybertruck's air suspension for an onboard air compressor is rooted in fundamental differences in specifications between the air suspension and air compressor meant to inflate tires. Integrating an onboard air compressor into the air suspension system would lead to a prolonged inflation time of 30 minutes, highlighting the importance of distinct design considerations for efficiently filling up your tire. As we explore advancements in energy sharing within electric vehicles, a pertinent question arises. What distinguishes the PowerShare feature as a groundbreaking technology? PowerShare has recently become a focal point of discussion on the Cybertruck Owner Club forum, underscoring a distinctive technological aspect of the Cybertruck. Presently, the Cybertruck stands as the exclusive vehicle in Tesla's lineup featuring PowerShare technology. This innovative feature unleashes the battery's capability to supply power not only to the vehicle's onboard electronics, but also to other EVs and even your home during power outages. Tesla stated on its website, power your home during an outage for over three days with zero noise and emissions and 11.5 kilowatts of continuous capability. Conceptually, this technology is akin to charging in reverse. That is why we can call it bi-directional charging. The power output of the Cybertruck's PowerShare feature may vary depending on actual energy usage. Tesla has announced that the Cybertruck Foundation model will come equipped with the PowerShare Home Backup Wall Charger, and in a notable move, it'll be provided at no additional cost with the version. The purchase price of the Cybertruck Foundation encompasses all add-ons, making the PowerShare Home Backup Wall Charger an inclusive feature in this package. Nevertheless, the installation costs for incorporating PowerShare into other Cybertruck versions remain undisclosed. In a forum comment, it was speculated that the total cost for PowerShare home backup could be at least $5,000 US dollars as an option for non-foundation orders. The commenter later provided an explanation for arriving at this estimated figure. It appears the universal wall connector may be necessary, which is included, but that's normally $595. I say it's necessary since the UWC description includes verbiage about using the Cybertruck for home backup, whereas the regular wall connector does not mention this. It also includes the Tesla Powerwall slash Backup Gateway version 3. I couldn't find a MSRP through a quick Google, but I see a thousand dollars thrown around a lot when talking about the cost of the gateway in a Powerwall installation. So we're already at a thousand six hundred dollars in hardware plus the four thousand in installation cost they appear to cover. In contrast, Ford's F-150 Lightning features a similar system known as Intelligent Backup Power. By utilizing the 80 amp 4 Charge Station Pro, you can automatically supply power to your home when connected to your Ford F-150 Lightning. However, it's important to note that there are additional costs associated with this feature, including $1,310 for the Charge Station and $3,895 for the Home Integration Hardware. Notably, any installation costs for this setup are not specified. This concludes our comprehensive overview of the latest innovation in the Cybertruck. It is evident that Tesla is unwavering in its commitment to enhancing this vehicle by introducing an array of outstanding features, with weight mode standing out as the most prominent among them. Currently, this feature has received official confirmation, and we eagerly anticipate the release of Tesla's official footage showcasing the Cybertruck's performance in water. Considering the features of this car, what aspects do you find most appealing? And are there specific features you believe could be enhanced or added in future iterations to further improve the overall driving experience? Feel free to leave a comment below. If you found our content engaging, make sure to subscribe to the Atom Tech channel, give us a thumbs up, and ring the bell icon to stay updated. Well, that's it folks, thank you so much for watching, and we hope to see you again next time. Imagine the buzz surrounding the arrival of hundreds of Foundation Series Cybertrucks at showrooms. Curious about the latest Cybertruck components and the magic behind a simple mirror removal that, ele that elevates rainy driving? Well then buckle up as we dive into the world of Tesla's groundbreaking electric pickup. Now let's unveil the intriguing secrets of the Cybertruck. Всем привет! Сегодня я хочу показать, как разбирается зеркало на кибертраке. 
How does a seemingly simple mirror removal revolutionize rainy driving for the Cybertruck? Rap Bullies recently released a YouTube tutorial showcasing an effortless method to dismantle the Cybertruck's mirror. This process, surprisingly easy and hands-off from the door panel, diverges from previous attempts on other Tesla models. Upon closer inspection, a snug-fitting component is discovered, requiring the removal of three substantial 40-sized bolts. This reveals an interior plastic latch concealing a cable that needs disconnection and extraction. Transitioning to the appearance, the first screws, significant in size, make the subsequent steps a breeze as everything effortlessly unlocks using just fingers. The eye-catching red piece unfolds, and within approximately 5 minutes or less, the mirror is successfully disengaged. But wait, here's the twist. Tesla's Cybertruck initially preferred a rear camera over a traditional mirror for rear traffic visibility on the center screen. However, a surprise issue emerged during rainy drives, revealing an overlooked challenge in unconventional vehicle features. As teardown veteran Sandy Monroe discovered immediately after delivery, the truck's aerodynamics created a vortex, directing dirt toward the rear camera and impacting visibility during rainy drives. Cybertruck's here in Austin, ready for delivery tomorrow. As anticipation brews among Tesla enthusiasts, Foundation Series Cybertrucks are making their grand appearance in showrooms. Tesla enthusiasts are buzzing with anticipation as the Foundation Series Cybertrucks make their way to showrooms. The Austin showroom is brimming with these eagerly awaited electric pickups, ready for tomorrow's deliveries. Meanwhile, the delivery of a Foundation Series Cybertruck has already taken place in Boulder, adding to the growing excitement. On a picturesque Sunday morning, keen observers spotted a car hauler semi-truck heading toward Boulder on December 17th. The truck was transporting Model Ys and notably one Cybertruck. Exclusive photos captured the Cybertruck parked at the Superior Colorado Tesla Showroom slash Service Center near Boulder. Notable details from the sighting include plastic wrap on the front seats, an indication of the pristine condition of the interior. The front left tire adorned with a clean paper sticker suggests minimal usage. Enthusiasts even got a close-up view of the front passenger side ball joints and suspension, providing a sneak peek into the vehicle components. As Tesla's Foundation Series Cybertrucks make their way to eager customers, the anticipation and enthusiasm among the Tesla community continue to soar. But that's not all. Explore the world of Cybertruck components, from reasonably priced fenders to the substantial cost of windshield repairs. On December 13th of 2023, Tesla updated its parts catalog to include details about the newly introduced all-electric Cybertruck. The Cybertruck's parts catalog provides a clear glimpse into the electric pickup's design, pricing for key components, and some yet-to-be-announced features. Let's dissect the intricate details and potential costs for repairs on this stainless steel marvel. Advanced Front Camera System Highlighted in the catalog is the Cybertruck's cutting-edge front camera system. Placed at the center of the front bumper, this camera boasts a heater and washer. Essential for visibility in various weather conditions, especially in colder climates, this feature prevents frost buildup and ensures a clear view for advanced driving features like autopilot and full self-driving. All-Terrain Tires and Suspension System Equipped with 35-inch all-terrain tires by Goodyear Wrangler Territory RT, priced at $470 each, the Cybertruck demonstrates readiness for rugged terrains. While the cost details for the suspension system are not provided, it's expected to meet high-performance standards and adapt to various driving conditions. Enhanced Phone Key Support The Cybertruck boasts up to seven Bluetooth Low Energy or BLE sensors, enhancing phone key support for better detection of the driver's phone location. This improves various features including unlocking, setting the correct driver profile, and connecting Bluetooth audio to the correct device. Sirius XM Hardware and Unique Design Blend 
positioned between Tesla's luxury Model S and X and the more economical 3 and Y, the Cybertruck introduces unique features like air suspension, a powered frunk, and more. Notably missing on Cybertruck, however, are features available on the Model S, such as an instrument cluster and dedicated Sirius XM hardware. The absence of dedicated Sirius XM hardware might disappoint some future owners, raising the possibility of Tesla introducing a streaming version soon. Tesla's Cybertruck unveils details of Wade mode for water crossings. In a surprising revelation, the Cybertruck's parts catalog has unveiled a unique feature designed for traversing rivers, the Wade mode. This mode, alongside Baja and Overland driving modes, utilizes various air suspension adjustments to prepare the electric pickup for off-road challenges. When selecting the custom Wade mode from the central console display, the UI, or user interface, indicates that the Cybertruck raises ride height and pressurizes the battery when driving through water. The 14-inch suspension travel makes crossing shallow rivers and streams effortless with the Cybertruck. However, the potential risk of water reaching the battery elements and causing short circuits prompted Tesla to devise a solution. The parts catalog reveals the engineering secrets behind this process. The the catalog introduces the Scuba Pack Airline, a trace of Elon Musk's amphibious dreams connecting the air tank to the battery pack. Moreover, a scuba valve block assembly allows compressed air to increase outward pressure, preventing water ingress into the 123 kilowatt hour battery pack during river crossings. This innovative approach adds to the off-road credibility of Tesla's pioneering electric pickup. The Tesla Cybertruck parts catalog unveils component prices and repair insights as well. As Tesla enthusiasts eagerly anticipate delivery confirmation emails for the Cybertruck, the company has released additional reading materials to provide a deeper understanding of this stainless steel marvel. The Cybertruck Owners Club meticulously analyzed the parts catalog, revealing reasonable prices for key components. Notably, the front fenders are priced at approximately $550 each, considering the vehicle's substantial size. The community also pointed out the potential cost-effectiveness of labor for preparing these fenders thanks to the absence of a painting requirement. However, certain components carry higher repair costs. The extensive windshield priced at $1,900 appears reasonable at first glance, yet considering the need for specialized equipment due to its size, repairing the Cybertruck's windshield might incur additional costs beyond the $1,900 part price. Additionally, the shatterproof side windows of the Cybertruck, enhancing the vehicle's safety profile, are priced between $2 to $260. The powered frunk, another innovative feature, adds convenience and storage, costing approximately $2,845. The unique construction of the Cybertruck allows for individual availability of front and rear fenders. Another notable component is the front steering actuator, priced at $3,300. While the Cybertruck steer-by-wire system has earned acclaim, the parts catalog suggests that this feature comes with a substantial price tag. Adding a touch of humor, Tesla enthusiasts have playfully joked about the Cybertruck's sizable wiper blade, priced at $75. These insights from the Cybertruck's owner's club, coupled with the parts catalog details, offers a comprehensive view of component prices, presenting both reasonable and potentially costly considerations for repairs on Tesla's innovative electric pickup. Do you think these prices are acceptable or too expensive? If this update intrigued you, hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments section down below. Your support fuels our journey into the future. Diverging from the traditional use of a 12V system to power auxiliary units in vehicles, Tesla has incorporated a 48V wiring harness in their Cybertruck. While this technology is not entirely new, as it can be observed in mild hybrid vehicles like the Porsche Cayenne and Bentley Bentayga, the Cybertruck's use of a 48V system represents the first instance of such technology appearing in full electric vehicles. What prompts Tesla to prioritize 48V power? How does this choice contribute to cost savings? What is the correlation between this power configuration and steer-by-wire technology? Buckle up and join us on this exhilarating journey as we unravel the enigmatic mysteries of the Cybertruck. Are you ready for the ride? How much copper does a 48V system really save? The automotive industry last witnessed a voltage upgrade for cars from 6 to 12 volts nearly seven decades ago in 1955, driven by the escalating demand for electrical power. 
In the traditional 12-volt systems, wiring and components must be thicker, larger, and heavier to endure the heightened electrical loads. Tesla's Cybertruck and their upcoming vehicles use a forward-thinking 48-volt architecture. Not only reduces the amount of copper needed in wiring, leading to cost savings, but it also contributes to a lighter vehicle, potentially enhancing overall efficiency. Automotive journalist Jason Kamasa highlighted the groundbreaking nature of the Cybertruck's 48V system. Emphasizing Tesla's unprecedented move, he expressed, But there is something no one has ever done before. Tesla quadrupled the low voltage side of this car, meaning anything that would have otherwise run on 12 volts now runs on 48 volts. This cuts the current needs in four, meaning this car needs only a quarter as much copper, saving Tesla money that it can then pass on to you. This indicates a remarkable 75% reduction in the required amount of copper for a Cybertruck, prompting the question, how much cost savings can be achieved through the implementation of a 48V system? At the 2023 Tesla shareholder meeting, Tesla CEO Elon Musk conveyed the company's ambitious vision, stating that they are on track to reach an annual production milestone of 20 million cars. As reported by MINING.COM to achieve Tesla's goal of building 20 million cars per year, the company would need 1,820,000 tons of copper. Transitioning to the Cybertruck narrative, with over 2 million reservations, Tesla faces the challenge of producing at least 2 million vehicles. Assuming consistent copper usage across Tesla's car models, this would translate to approximately 182,000 tons of copper required for this production volume. Considering the potential reduction to a quarter of the current copper usage, at production of 2 million Cybertruck, Tesla could save more than 136,000 tonnes of copper, resulting in a requirement of only 45,500 tonnes for the production of 2 million vehicles. Such a reduction would mean each Cybertruck would use 68 kilograms less copper, leaving only 22.75 kilograms per vehicle. According to the latest copper prices reported by Business Insider, as of December 8, one ton of copper is valued at 8,348 USD. Specifically, a 48V system is estimated to save approximately 568 USD for each vehicle, computed by multiplying the cost of one ton of copper, 8,348 USD by the reduced copper amount per vehicle, 0.68 tonnes. This financial analysis underscores the tangible economic benefits associated with the innovative 48-volt system implemented by Tesla. What is the 48V system's role in reducing the weight of the vehicle? The fact that a 48V system uses 75% less copper also means thinner wires, providing more simplified wiring harnesses, and thus reduced weight. Sandy Monroe, car engineer, has a visual illustration of this problem. Let's have a look at what a normal harness would look like. Here's one right here. And Tragically, that's the other side. Okay, so what does that really and truly mean if I go to 48 volts? Now, there are some power lines on here. Power lines are usually in orange. But in essence, we're looking at a 73% weight reduction in going to 48 volts and also the 800 volt system. Both those systems combined with the ethernet ring gives, <laughs> gives Tesla a 78% reduction in weight. Jeebs, a YouTuber specializing in cars, added to this point of view. Um, and reducing weight is something that I've been very excited about for a long time with EVs, uh, because the lighter the car, the better. That means they can put smaller battery packs in them, they can be more efficient, and they'll be more nimble in handling, so. What is the relationship between a 48V system and steer-by-wire? The 48-volt system's most significant beneficiary is the steer-by-wire technology. Transitioning to a 48V low-voltage electrical architecture enables Tesla to replace the vehicle's heavy and complex steering system with a fully electronic alternative. In a groundbreaking move for production cars, Cybertruck eliminates the physical link between the steering wheel and front wheels. Activating the steering merely involves turning on the car, with the steering wheel connecting exclusively to a set of sensors and a force feedback unit. This cutting-edge technology interprets steering inputs to determine the degree of turning for both front and rear wheels. It offers four-wheel steering with three motors, 
two in the front and one in the rear, with a total of five horsepower. The result is an advanced design that not only elevates maneuvers, outperforming traditional sports cars, but also provides a turning radius akin to that of a Model SA, which measures at 11.8 meters, approximately 38.7 feet. In contrast, Lexus faces challenges in achieving a comparable experience. Illustrating this point is the Lexus RZ 450e, where the difficulty of adjusting to Lexus's steer-by-wire technology becomes apparent due to the constant and dramatic changes in the steering ratio. Furthermore, the unconventional yoke design of the steering wheel introduces an additional layer of complexity, making the handling of the RZ notably challenging. The adoption of a squircle steering wheel in the Cybertruck serves as a discerning choice, indicating that Tesla acknowledges and addresses the challenges associated with the traditional yoke design. Here is a comprehensive overview of the information gathered on the Cybertruck's 48V low voltage system. Recognizing the advantages of this technology, Tesla took a proactive step by distributing a pamphlet titled How to Design a 48-Volt Vehicle to the CEOs of various automotive companies, including competitors like Ford. Subsequently, Ford's CEO Jim Farley publicly acknowledged receiving the document and expressed his gratitude to Elon Musk. So what are your thoughts on Tesla's decision to share a 48V guide with leaders of other auto companies? Is this a strategic move aimed at fostering collaboration and innovation within the industry? Or could it be interpreted as a subtle critique directed towards other automakers? If you found this exploration intriguing, consider showing some love by subscribing, giving us a thumbs up, and ringing that bell icon to stay in the loop with the latest updates. Your support is crucial for expanding our content to more enthusiasts. In a recent post by Nick Cruz Patain, an ex-user, an image about the special feature he found in the Cybertruck's off-road Baja settings called Wade Mode revealed a feature designed specifically for navigating through water. This raises the question, can the Cybertruck truly transform into a water craft? How does Cybertruck perform when driving through water and what are the underlying factors that enable this capability? Join us as we break down the details of the Cybertruck's performance when driving through water, exploring the mechanisms behind the wade mode, and delving into potential accessories that could enhance its aquatic prowess. From buoyancy calculations to the pressurization of the battery pack, we'll explore the science and engineering marvels that make the Cybertruck stand out in the realm of electric off-road vehicles. Buckle up and join us on this thrilling journey as we uncover the enigmatic secrets of the Cybertruck's ability to conquer both land and water. So, without further ado, let's dive in and explore the future of off-road adventures with the Cybertruck. How can Cybertruck float on water? However, the Cybertruck apparently has a wade mode. Now, wade might mean put the air suspension in the highest position and hope you make it to the other side, or it might mean swim. To float, the weight force on a vehicle must be equal or less than the upward push by the water. The Cybertruck boasts impressive dimensions, measuring 223.7 inches in length, which is approximately 5.68 meters, 95 inches in width, or about 2.41 meters, and standing at a height of 70 and a half inches, or around 1.79 meters. In a hypothetical scenario where the Cybertruck is partially submerged, let's delve into its buoyancy. Assuming the vehicle being half submerged, the resultant submerged volume calculates to approximately 432.6 cubic feet or 12 and a quarter cubic meters. As per Archimedes' principle, the thrust force applied to the Cybertruck is computed by multiplying the specific weight of water or 10,000 newtons per cubic meter by the submerged volume at 12 and a quarter cubic meters, yielding a final figure of 122,000. 500 newtons. Comparatively, the Cybertruck's mass, specifically the Cyber Beast version, is 6,843 pounds, or around 3.1 tons, leading to 31,000 newtons in terms of weight. Remarkably, the vehicle's weight is only a quarter of the thrust applied by the Archimedes principle, indicating that the Cybertruck has the potential to float on water. Massive adjustable suspension height. Is that a key to driving in water? Cyber wheel. It's like a the weird. Rear? No, no, no. The uh, oh. yoke oh. thing. <laughs> yeah, it's like not a yoke, not a wheel. Wait, is that a 
white interior? They have white, yeah. yeah, yeah. But is there, I thought that was only on the performance so. yeah. I don't know. Cybertruck can tackle anything with electronically adaptive air suspension that offers 12 inches of travel and 17 inches of clearance. However, driving through places deeper than 17 inches is a different story. We do not know how water resistant the Cybertruck is and whether there is any official data to evaluate this or not. Meanwhile, Rivian vehicles have independent air suspension, which allows for 6.5 inches of vertical travel as low as 7.9 inches or as high as 14.4 inches. The air suspension is much lower than Tesla, but Rivian has what they call the thermoplastic polyurethane casing that can handle tumbles into asphalt and into mud, and the key fob is IP67 rated. If a product has an IP67 rating, that indicates it is waterproof, which means it can be submerged in 3 feet of water for up to 30 minutes. What is the mechanism behind the pressurization of the battery pack? In October of 2022, Elon Musk shared on X, you'd need an electric propeller mounted on the tow hitch to go faster than a few knots. Notably, Tesla has not officially discussed or mentioned this propeller on the Cybertruck accessories page. There is certainly the chance that Tesla could develop something along these lines in the future, but the capabilities need to be tested extensively before it would even be close to recommended as a potential option for those who want to cross over small bodies of water. The purpose of this propeller remains speculative, possibly aimed at addressing standing water on roadways to safeguard the vehicle and its battery pack. Another idea from Jonathan Ramsey from Autoblog predicts that Tesla will launch a product package specifically for those who are passionate about wading in with Cybertruck. He says, or who knows, Tesla could unveil a $23,000 Cyberbeast airboat package, which could be quite effectively cool. This is all the information we have compiled about the Cybertruck's wading mode. It may be a future feature in the interface that will be implemented in a later over-the-air update. The question remains, what specific challenges might Tesla encounter in ensuring the Cybertruck's waterproof functionality? What safety measures are in place to mitigate potential risks associated with the wade mode, especially in diverse water conditions? Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you found this exploration intriguing, consider showing us some love by subscribing, giving us a thumbs up, and ringing that bell to stay in the loop with the latest updates. Your support is pivotal in broadening our reach to more enthusiasts like you. Thanks for joining us on this journey, and we look forward to seeing you in the next exciting installments.